Greetings and salutations, and welcome to the Onyx Tavern. Uh, this is your host, the Barkeep, with today's podcast, number 11, which I have simply titled Bandai of America Rant. Now, this uh, podcast is going to be a little bit more simplistic uh, than the last ones I've done, mainly because I just want to get it out there, uh, because I'm still fueled on emotions at the moment from basically uh, the news that I've learned today and several years of anger and frustration. Let me kind of start here. Well, for those of you uh, who, who may not know, today Bandai has released information that at the San Diego Comic Con this year, they are going to be releasing um, a Legacy Power Morpher uh, with the green and white Ranger coins, and that it's going to be uh, gold-plated in 24 carats, no less. Uh, now that sounds interesting, doesn't it? But again, here's the catch. One, they're only making a thousand units of it, and two, they're going to be releasing it at the San Diego Comic Con this year. And this is the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, I've just come back from the post office as I have written a four-page angry letter to Bandai of America, criticizing them on this issue, as well as a number of other issues that I have uh, that I will get into with this video. Now, um, the, the first issue that I have with this morpher is, one, it's they're only making a thousand of it. For those of you who don't know about what happened with the previous Legacy Morpher, it was released, I believe, at the end of January, beginning of February, for a list price of... Uh, $49.99 at Toys R Us. It was a Toys R Us exclusive, meaning that you cannot buy it anywhere other than Toys R Us. Needless to say, within about a week or two, all of these were bought and sold, and they were no longer available on the Toys R Us website. A month later, these toys appeared back on the Toys R Us website, now, as a pre-order, which would not be available for about five months later, um, and we're $10 more. So those of you who buy for $49.99, count yourself lucky, because I had to buy for $59.99 plus shipping. Um, further, the Legacy Morpher ended up on Amazon and eBay being scalped, and I believe if you go right now to Amazon, you could probably get Legacy Morpher for about $250 minimum. Yes, an item that was $50 upon its re original release has now jumped by uh, $200 in a six-month period. So part of this issue that I see is, one, there's only a thousand of them, and you know about half the people that are going to buy them are going to sell them on eBay as a scalper. Because I have been told by a couple of my sources that there are people who do go to Comic-Con, get these exclusive items, uh, and then sell them at, at outrageous prices. Um, so that's the first issue I have with it, that Bandai is making a limited release on that, when history has already shown them that people are buying these morphers and scalping them. The second issue I have with this is that Bandai is having these exclusively sold at Comic-Con. Now, I don't know how many of my fans here live in California or how many live in San Diego, but I'm up in Montana right now going to school uh, for summer school. I'm married. I work a part-time job right now, and I can't go to the convention. So basically what Bandai is telling me, if you can't get here, you're out of luck. That's basically what they're saying. For those of us who live on opposite sides of the country, can't afford to go because we've already made our travel arrangements for the summer or have already traveled, they're basically saying, yeah, if you, if you don't get here, you're never going to go ahead and get it. Which I take uh, offense to because, uh, first of all, those of you who, who have ever been to Montana, there's only one Toys R Us in this entire state. So if I do want to get Power Ranger action figures or anything, I do have to travel all the way to Toys R Us uh, in Billings to go ahead and get it. And that's about two and a half, three hour drive from where I'm at. And that's just, just ridiculous. But this is even more ridiculous that I have to go to a convention that I don't go to because I hate crowds. I mean, I'd go to a convention, but I just hate crowds. I can't deal with that kind of thing. 
and then have to be one of the lucky first thousand people to go there and buy it, which most likely, I think, is, since it's with 24 karat gold plated, it's got to be at least $60, $70 is what they're going to go ahead and sell it for. So this is just the most ridiculous thing that I've ever heard uh, Bandai do really up to now. Because, you know, I, I'm a collector. I collect a lot of these things. And, you know, I've tried to get my hand on the Legacy Megazord. Yeah, I'm not paying $300 off Amazon for it. I should be able to go to any store in this country and buy it. But, no, it's only available at Toys R Us. It's only available for a limited run. And people have already bought it. The same thing with the Legacy Morpher is happening um, with the Legacy Megazord. And I just think that's ridiculous because you have fans like me who have followed it for 20 years, bought their products, and now they're basically playing keep away with us on these products. And I just don't get that. I don't collect anything else, so I don't know what other franchises do with their limited runs and stuff. But, you know, it's just ridiculous. It's just stupid. And again, as I said, this is the straw that breaks the camel's back for me. Because, I'll get, I'll, let me tell you this story first, and we'll get into it. In 2007, when Operation Overdrive was out, um, I went out and bought the Drive Max Megazord at my local Toys R Us. At that time, I was still living back in Kentucky, and it was easy to get to a Toys R Us. I didn't have to drive three hours to get there. Um, and when I got the Drive Max Megazord, I noticed that something was a little off with it, and I couldn't quite put my finger on um, what that was. Um, months later, I ended up getting uh, Vehicle 6 from uh, Bokager in uh, Japan. And, and that basically is the drill, um, if you remember from um, Operation Overdrive and Bokager, that's the orange drill vehicle number 6. And when I got it, I, I pretty much like, okay, I'm going to connect this to the Drive Max Megazord. I tried to do so, did not work. Why did not work? Well, turns out that, and I didn't know this at the time, and I'm sure this is common knowledge now, but at the time I was not aware that Bandai of America was doing separate molds than the Japanese toys. And basically, those of you who have any of the, the Japanese toys know that they're usually pretty small, made of die-cast metal, really good quality plastic. The toy I had, had was nothing but plastic, had a poor paint job, was larger than the Japanese version and had no die cast metal or any metal components on it. It was around this time that I discovered Linear Ranger's site when he did a comparison of the two and I was pissed. As soon as I realized what Bandai was doing is that they were not releasing the exact same toys that they were releasing in Japan, I was done with Bandai of America. Because I did research and looked back at all the toys I have and realized that since 1993, they've basically been screwing us over. Because everybody knows the Dragon Zord that came out in 93 had the lightning bolts on its feet, as opposed to the Z, which stands for Zoo Ranger. Well, I always thought that this was just like, you know, something that they did and all that and wasn't a big deal. When I eventually found out that the Zoo Ranger toy had the appropriate stickers, and they chose not to release them in America. Again, this was all about the same time. I pretty much found all this out in 2007, and I just gave up on Bandai of America. I gave away the Drive Max Megazord, and I began to, what I've done today, collecting the toys from Japan. Now, here's why I'm upset at Bandai for this particular practice. First of all, I should not have to go to Japan to buy these toys. If I want these toys, I should be able to go to any store, Toys R Us, Walmart, whatever, and buy them with the same quality. And again, let's look at the Drive Max Megazord. What I ended up doing was actually spending $300 to get the Drive Max. Granted, it came with the other Bokanger toys so I can get the Drive Max Ultra Zord or the Ultimate Die Bulkin. But, did I really need to spend $300? No, I did not have to spend $300. Because Bandai should have released that item in the United States exactly as it is in Japan. So I can go ahead and buy it right there at the store. 
Heck, they didn't even release Siren Builder. That was a toy they did not release in the United States whatsoever, which I had to buy years later for, I think it was $100 or something like that. Th that's just ridiculous to me that I should have to go ahead and do that. Why is this company making these toys in one country exactly like their show counterparts with the lights, the die cast metal, the appropriate uh, color scheme, and all that other stuff, but then when they come to America, they make completely different ones. They're made in the same country. They're made in China. They're made in uh, Thailand. They're made in Indonesia, wherever and stuff. So, obviously, they got them coming from the same factory, right? I don't know. And in some cases, they recolor them. The Blizzard Force Megazord was released in, like, orange and green or something like that. But if you buy it from Japan, it's in its normal purple and blue and violet color scheme. Why was that not released in its proper colors here in America? It's boneheaded moves like that that make me stop buying them from Bandai of America. Because I have the Shinkano which is the Power Ranger Samurai Megazord that I bought for that my friend. And I want to thank Daisy right now. Daisy, thank you for doing this. She went to uh, Hong Kong to visit family. I gave her a check, and she brought back tons and tons of Shinkanger toys. I was able to actually save money that way because she bought them directly from the source and brought them back. I didn't have to pay for shipping. But when Power Ranger Samurai came out and they released the Megazord, it was bulkier. It didn't have all the proper colors, it didn't have the metal, it felt lighter, and it would not connect to anything else I have. The Clawzord was the same way, the Bullzord was horrible, it's, it's a shadow of what it is in the Japanese version. They're releasing toys to the American audience that are of inferior quality than they are the Japanese. I mean, come on. Why, here's, here's the thing that bugs me more than anything, is that I cannot buy them from Bandai of America for reasonable prices. I have to go online, pay $20, $30 minimum for an item, and then I have to pay anywhere from $20 to $60 to have it shipped, and at one point I had to wait eight weeks for a particular item to go ahead and arrive. And I'll give you another example. The Delta Command Base was something that I ordered from a store called Toys and Joys in Honolulu, which I bought for, oh, I think $160, and I had to pay $30 shipping, and I had to wait eight weeks for it to come in because they hadn't got it from the wholesaler yet. That's ridiculous. That is stupid. That is dumb. Why should I have to go ahead and put up with that? I'm sorry, everybody. I'm just going on this rant right here because... Just reading this today, looking at this awesome item that they're releasing, which I have the original Legacy Morpher, and that is freaking cool. But why do we have to go through this whole song and dance to get it? It, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, again, why do I have to go to specialty toy stores uh, in Hawaii, go to websites over in Japan and Hong Kong, have my friend go pick them up while she's on vacation, when they should just release them here in America. Now, I know what people are going to go ahead and say. I know what Bandai is going to say. Well, it costs too much to ship that in because of the metal. Well, how about instead of outsourcing to Japan, you actually make them here in America? Or why don't you just charge the appropriate price? I mean, I'd be willing to pay $65 for one of those Megazords if the quality is good and I don't have to pay for damn shipping. I mean, I have to pay for the item, tax, shipping, all that stuff. It's it's just a nightmare. It's a mess to deal with. You know, I actually bought one item from Japan, uh, the Go Buster Rabbit. It was an $8 toy, but I had to spend $35 to ship it. So, you know, and that's an item that hasn't been released in the United States yet, um, but I'm trying to get ahead of the game here since, you know, Disney and Saban dropped the ball and we missed basically two years uh, of catching up on Power Rangers. Now, I'm told they're supposed to release the Gosei Megazord, the Japanese import. I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. And it's going to be a limited release, I'm sure. Or Toys R Us exclusive, meaning that, yeah, you have to be uh, getting at Toys R Us or pre-order it a year in advance to go ahead and get it.
Again, the whole thing is stupid. It really upsets me. But I'm going to go ahead and get to my point right here, what I've done. And this is what I want to go ahead and recommend to everybody. I have no idea what my fan base is or who my followers are here or anything like that. Um, but to all of you, here's what I recommend. Don't put up with it anymore. Don't accept it anymore. What I would recommend is, first of all, if you haven't already, boycott Bandai of America. Don't, do not continue to go ahead and buy those cheap toys. Again, they are made of inferior plastic. They make junk up that doesn't belong in the show. And, again, it, it's, it's not any good. So boycott Bandai of America first. Second of all, do what I did. I, today, I just got back from the post office because I wrote a four-page letter to Bandai of America. I explained to them how I am upset about this Legacy Morpher thing at the San Diego Comic Con, expressed my displeasure with that, and then I went into the whole thing I just told you guys about the uh, toys in the past, how they're not releasing it. And I also made it quite clear, and you guys can feel free to do this without me if you want to go ahead, but I made it clear to Bandai of America that I'm going to report them to the Better Business Bureau if I don't get any type of reasonable response back from them. I've dealt with EA Sports before. I reported them to the, the Better Business Bureau. I didn't get much out of it. That's still kind of an ongoing thing right now. But I am sick and tired with what Bandai is doing. I've had to put it up for, for years, and I'm going to... I'm going to stop it. I'm not. I'm not going to deal with it anymore. And I'm right. I wrote that to them. If I don't get the response that that I believe we as fans and collectors deserve, loyal fans and collectors for the last 20 years, I might add on my part, then I'm just going to go ahead and report them and see where we're going to go from there. I know that may sound uh, strange. That may sound a little bit extreme. But again, I've been dealing with this for years now. I don't feel that anybody should have to buy stuff imported overseas when they should just make it available here in the United States. I mean, what kind of what kind of time do we live in where we can talk with people in other countries, we can easily travel to other countries, but we have to go through this entire process to buy something that's only available in that country, and the same company who makes them chooses not to release them for American consumers. This is why... I feel that toys are just horrible in this country. My niece is coming uh, next month from South Korea, and I want to get her a, a nice toy and all that, but after my wife and I went to uh, the, the local Toys R Us and all that, I realized they do not make toys as good as they used to be. I mean, I have no idea what's up with those Care Bears. I have no idea what's up with those G.I. Joes or Star Wars. Uh, heck, even My Little Pony is not the same way it was like 15 years ago. Something is wrong with the American toy industry, and I don't know what we can do to go ahead and change it. But again, I ask all my followers out there, or anybody uh, who's listening to this, is again, don't buy anything from Bandai of America again. Write them, express your concerns, uh, just like I have. They have a phone number. Um, it's on Bandai.com. I'll try to go ahead and post a link here in the description of the video. And then if you want, uh, you know, report them to the BBB. I'm not going to do so until I get a response from them. But if you guys are more fed up with them than I am, then I'd suggest go ahead and do that anyway. Um, so I apologize uh, again for my rant. I know I'm yelling a bit here and just going off. But I'm just riding that emotional high right now. I'm just really frustrated at this whole thing. Uh, I'm wasting time. I'm wasting money. I'm wasting all this stuff just because this company chooses not to release a product that it makes for other countries. You know, I've said it once, I'll say it again. Japanese kids have it best over there because they're ahead of us by at least five years in technology. They have awesome toys and they have beautiful women. But that's neither here nor there. So again, do, do what you feel is right. I thank you guys for listening here. I promise my next video will not be a rant, uh, but we'll see what Bandai does. And I will have a follow-up to update you guys once I find out what they decide to do or not do. Um, so thank you guys very much. Uh, you guys have yourselves a good evening, and the tavern is now closed.